Hey everyone, this is Derry from Method. Over the last few weeks, we've been working with main raid team member Zerwu to put together these six tips to hopefully help a novice to intermediate player learn some things they may not have already known to help you guys push higher keys. So without further ado, let's get to the first tip. Comp is very important for Mythic Plus as it dictates a lot of the overall gameplay and performance of the run, ranging from how much you'll be able to pull to how fast you can complete the key. The overall best combination right now for Mythic Plus is Blood Decay, Holy Paladin or Resto Druid, Affliction Warlock, Windwalker Monk, and either a Balanced Druid, Subtlety Rogue, or Marksman Hunter. Blood Decays are key in this because of their mass grip, self-healing, and group leech. They can gather mobs quickly and enable the healer to do more DPS because of the self-heal and leech. Affliction Warlock is overall the best class in Mythic Plus right now. Depending on the dungeon, Affliction can do well on AoE and single target damage. And because they have no real cooldowns apart from Soul Harvest, they have a very high consistent damage throughout the whole dungeon. They have massive self-healing built into the rotation, and because of that they don't often even require healing from your healer, which is great for the healer's mana usage. Monks are on the list because they provide a 5 second stun and also have a lot of damage in both AoE and single target. Their AoE DPS scales exponentially because of their Mark of the Crane mechanic, which buffs your spinning crane kick damage by 40% for 15 seconds per target struck by Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and a Rising Sun Kick. This enables the other two DPSers to go on a more single target oriented route if needed. The third DPS slot depends on what dungeon you're about to do and what you want for your group. Let's talk about Balanced Druids. Balance has a high sustained AoE damage and can live through one-shot mechanics easily with bear form. If you're doing a dungeon with a lot of trash that needs to be silenced, Solar Beam is the perfect addition to your team. Examples here would be Halls of Valor, Arcway, Mob Souls, or Lower Karazhan. Subrogues are good at providing utility and high priority single target damage. Most of the time you see teams pulling additional mobs to bosses, that way the rogue gains a lot of boss damage. Their mass stealth can save you a lot of time when used properly. For example, skipping the two last trash packs after the mini boss right before the stairs without wasting your invisibility potion in Cathedral of Eternal Night, or skipping the last big pack before the first boss in Vault of the Wardens. Eye of Ishara is a really good rogue dungeon too, as you can skip mobs in the beginning with Shroud and almost always have adds that you can pull into bosses to benefit the rogue's single target damage. Marksmith Hunters are here on the list for their DPS and binding shot. Their AoE burst potential is really good, and they can outrage a lot of one-shot mechanics by simply standing at max range. Also, Feign Death works on abilities like Nightmare Bolt or Feed on the Weak, and you can skip certain trash mobs with Freezing Trap by trapping and Feign Deathing afterwards. So let's talk about healers. Holy Paladin or Resto Druid? It depends on the dungeon itself. You have to take Immunities, Spot Heal versus Group Heal, damage output, and overall utility into account. Bubble, for example, is really good in Upper Karazhan, where you can soak an entire Coalesce power phase on the Mana Devourer boss on your own. Paladin provides a lot of boss damage, but they are lacking group healing in comparison to Druid, which makes Shade of Medivh a little harder. In other dungeons, they enable huge pulls by putting Blessing of Protection on the tank, that way the tank doesn't need to use defensive cooldowns against physical attacks until the mobs are actually gathered. Resto Druid can outplay and outlive a lot of mechanics with Bear Form plus Frenzied Regeneration, and provide a lot of utility with Typhoon, especially during Sanguine Weeks. In the Arcway, they can stealth through the whole mob part before General Zakal, and then res the whole team upstairs, but this technique also works with a Boomkin. Eye of Ashara is a special case, since Paladins provide Blessing of Protection, which is basically another battle res on the last boss, since you can immune another Crushing Depth cast that way, which would usually kill a group member. Their Devotion Aura helps you out on Lady Hate Coil, because there's one less Focus Lightning cast to worry about, which would usually one-shot you without any defenses up. Resto Druids, on the other hand, are overall really good in Eye of Ashara because of their superb group healing and AoE trash DPS. The last boss requires a lot of movement, which Resto Druids can handle very well in comparison to Paladins. And here are some extra tips on comp. Being a Blood Elf is pretty good, since their racial is a 3 second silence on a minute and a half cooldown. With this you're able to set up proper CC chains on big AoE caster pulls. 
Being an engineer is also not mandatory, but pretty cool. The Cobalt Frag Belt, or Cobalt Frag Bombs, are still in the game and OP. If each group member was an engineer, you would have 10 of these to use. That's 10 additional AoE interrupts and disorientates. So as far as tanks go, Vengeance DH instead of Blood DK. Well, they have a huge CC toolkit while using the Legendary Shoulders, which helps your group with doing and controlling big pools. They do overall more DPS than a Blood DK and don't have big issues with skittish. There are three weak auras that will make your lives a lot easier in Mythic Plus. First, we have an interrupt tracker with the Cephas cooldown included. This is really good to coordinate your interrupt rotation while taking Cephas into account as well. Then we have a CC tracker that tracks all kinds of CCs available to your group. Use this to manage your CC rotation and just to get a better overview of what you have available. And third, we have a weak aura that displays your effective health against physical and magic attacks. This weak aura helps you out on very high keys, since you could see if you would live the next one-shot ability or if you need to use cooldowns. Mob count is one of the most important aspects in a Mythic Plus dungeon. Too often, we see groups going over count and effectively losing time by doing too much trash. Remember that neutral mobs give count as well. It's recommended that you watch some high Mythic Plus clears before you attempt your own to see what route the other players are taking and maybe even optimize their route to suit your own comp. Remember that the count required is different in teaming weeks. Dungeons like Cathedral of Eternal Night are even easier with teaming since there are more mobs that give a lot of count. Now let's talk about a fixed difficulty. To see all the affixed combos possible, go ahead and click the link. Basically, everything with Tyrannical as the third effects is considered difficult. Teaming Volcanic Tyrannical being the easiest, and either Bolstering Explosive, Raging Necrotic, or Bursting Skittish, depending on the dungeon, the worst affixes. Bolstering restricts you from doing massive pools, and so is Explosive. Raging Necrotic is a tank nightmare, and so is Bursting Skittish. Bursting keeps you from doing massive pools, and Skittish kills your melee pretty often. Remember that even the smallest abilities can still one-shot you at a certain level. What you want to focus on are the fortified weeks, since you can outplay trash much easier than bosses. The easiest affixes on High Mythic Plus Fortified are overall Sanguine Volcanic. Volcanic is the easiest affix since the rework. Sanguine got a little buff a while back, but is still easily manageable. You will still get into situations where certain mobs will heal quite a lot, such as the hallway before the last Indiana Jones stairs in Blackwork Hold. Letting the tank manage Sanguine in the proper way is key to not losing a lot of time. The worst affixes on Fortified are Bolstering Skittish, Bursting Quaking, and Teeming Explosive. Speaking about overall difficulty here, affixes vary in difficulty a lot depending on the dungeon. Be aware of the affixes that are in place and what exactly you want to pull. Gear sets are key to doing really well in High Mythic Plus. Everyone should have at least four different gear sets. First, a single target gear set containing your best in slot, single target legendaries, and staz setup. Second, a trash gear set with your two best multi target AoE legendaries, staz setup. Third, a single target gear set with Prydaz for the absorb shield and your best single target legendary. Last, one single target Prydaz plus avoidance gear set for additional reduction in really high keys. You can get up to 20% avoidance, otherwise 20% AoE damage reduction, which is huge on high keys. Certain abilities do around 10 million damage every 30 seconds, so 20% avoidance will effectively net you 2 million more health. Our last and maybe most important tip is for communication. Correct and clear communication is a must for High Mythic Plus. A wrong call can result in a wipe or death due to missed interrupts, stuns, or silences. Make sure to have set in-game leaders dictating what to pull, who's interrupting, stunning, what and when. Most of the time the tank is organizing the pools, a DPS is managing the interrupt and stun rotation, and your healer will be calling out what defensive cooldowns to use. Don't be afraid to improvise if you ninja pool or if a DPS dies before using his or her stun or interrupt. 
We recommend that you stick to the same pool or team of players every time you do High Mythic Plus, since synergy is a major part of success. The difference between a team that's been playing together for months compared to a team that plays with different people every week is astronomical. Well, that completes our top six tips for getting started in Mythic Plus. Is there something that you think we missed? Something we maybe should have included? Please leave us a comment below. On behalf of Wowhead and Method, if you enjoyed this video, feel like you learned something, mash that like button, and of course subscribe to never miss out on any of our video content. We'll see you next time on our tip series for Mythic Plus.